Okay, my name is Susan Standry. I'm the Emeritus Professor of Anatomy at King's College London, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Grey's Anatomy. Back in 1964, I was a medical student at Guy's Hospital Medical School, and I went sideways into a PhD. I didn't finish my medical training. I worked with a man called Peter Williams, who was, became one of the editors of Grey's Anatomy with Roger Warwick. And, uh, I continued my interest in neuroscience, working on peripheral nerve repair. And when Peter and Roger were editing, I think it was the 36th edition of Grey's, because I didn't have much money, I made a suggestion that I should produce the uh, bibliography for Grey's, because there wasn't one until that time. And uh, to my amazement, they said yes, and so I did that. And then for the next edition, I became involved with preparing or editing the peripheral nerve section. And when we got to the 38th edition, I was still working with them and it all went quiet for quite a long time. And then one morning, uh, Richard Fern, who was then very much involved with Greys, came to see me and said he was seeing everybody who had been working on Greys on the 38th edition, and he asked me what I thought of it. And I told him rather blankly what I thought of it. Uh, I felt it was a book that had lost its way and it was, hadn't been edited very well for some time. It had just had a lot of material put into it. So he listened and went off and went round the world and I thought I wouldn't hear any more about it. And he came back and saw me a few months later and said, well, I've talked to a lot of people and they like that idea. Would you like to do it? And that's how I got involved. It's been around for just over 150 years. It's when it was first conceived by Henry Gray, who was a young surgeon at St. George's Hospital in London, he asked a colleague, Henry Van Dyke Carter, to help him with the illustrations, and it was conceived as a book then, which would be pretty much an applied book, particularly for young surgeons, those going out to fight, or not to fight, but to tend the wounded in wars like the Crimean War. And it, it was, however, presented as a systematic book, uh, which meant that uh, if you were uh, in clinical practice more difficult to, to find something which would take you through an entire region, which is why when I came to, to edit it, I suggested that we change from the systematic approach to the regional approach and make it more immediately clinically relevant. I'm always interested to see how much more we can learn from imaging and the Connectome project which I spoke about last night, that absolutely fascinates me. Because as I said, the brain doesn't give up its secrets very easily and I think the the fact that we can now bring to bear such powerful investigative techniques looking at the, the brain and its connections, that to me has to be one of the most important endeavors that we're currently doing. But anything that is a new technique, uh, which combines new technologies and new surgical techniques with a, a deeper knowledge of anatomy, obviously to the benefit of the patient, for me is just a very exciting thing. And if we can help that in with Gray's anatomy, which I think we can, then that's good. Well, I would like to think that students used books. They tend to use very little information, full stop. But I think for surgical trainees, or for any trainees who are working in hospitals and on call in the evening, the, the, the fact that they can have access to a library electronically for them is tremendously important. Because we must remember, they might be working sort of two or three o'clock in the morning, they've got downtime for half an hour, and they can pick up um, their, their e-book or whatever, their iPad, and they can access them. For them, that's tremendously important. They tell me that, that is the way they would use the material. And of course, you then have the tremendous flexibility of going across various hyperlinks to find further information. I find that myself when I'm looking for material. You don't have a heavy, great book. You actually can just you know, click a mouse or touch a screen and get the information. My favorite bone, well, I, I don't know if you can see that one. I have two favorite bones. One is the, the, the sphenoid bone in the skull, and the other is the, one of the bones that articulates with it, which is a very, very delicate little bone called the ethmoid. And both of those bones are extraordinary. They're very difficult to envisage in situ, and if you show students, normally they don't see disarticulated skulls, and to see those bones, just to hold them is amazing, put them together. I think it's helping students to understand very complex three-dimensional problems and the head and neck is undoubtedly one of the most complex areas. That's great fun.